So Jared Anderson called out a number of his fellow contenders following his victory on the weekend over Jerry Forrest. And they were Philip Hergovich, Frank Sanchez, Dylan White again, Daniel Dubois and Michael Hunter. Now, it's good to see a young heavyweight being ambitious like this. And rather than calling out champions, who we know at the moment are tied up, calling out the other contenders. I like to see that. There's so many fighters in boxing these days who want to jump the queue, leapfrog all of the other contenders, leapfrog all the tough fights, and just get a title shot straight. Whereas, at least according to what he's saying, Jared Anderson is willing to earn the shot by fighting other contenders rather than just being given the shot because of, let's say, his promoter having the right connections. So, Philip Hergovich, we know, is mandatory for the IBF right now. It's unlikely that Anderson is going to get Philip Hergovich anytime soon. It wouldn't actually make sense for Philip Hergovich, who's already a mandatory, whose mandatory has been called against Usyk, to then pivot and say, okay, let's fight Anderson. That wouldn't actually make sense in this position. Frank Sanchez, however, that fight would make sense for both guys, right? Sanchez has been in more high-profile fights, at least one more high-profile fight than Anderson to date, and that was obviously against F.A. Jagba, a fight that Frank Sanchez won. Sanchez is allegedly 29 years of age, right? So he's a young, <laughs> apparently young, undefeated heavyweight. So yeah, I'd like to see it, Sanchez against uh, Jared Anderson. Get that on if we can. The only barrier there, of course, is that Anderson is with top rank, ESPN, and Frank Sanchez, last I checked, is with PBC. He switched trainers recently to uh, Joe Goosen, but in terms of his promotional situation, he's with PBC, so would top rank and PBC risk the unbeaten records of these two heavyweights against a rival promoter's fighter, you know, when they haven't even got title shots, either of them yet? Perhaps not, so that is potentially a barrier. Then there's Dylan White, who Jared Anderson has called out a number of times. He recently tweeted after Dylan White's fight against Jermaine Franklin and called Dylan White a bum and asked the boxing gods to feed him this bum in Dylan White. Again, White, I can't imagine, would be interested in Jared Anderson right now because maybe he's looking at the Anthony Joshua fight, perhaps the... Daniel Dubois fight isn't very realistic for Dylan White at this stage because apparently the WBA have called for their regular champion Daniel Dubois to face Alexander Usyk or the other way around, however you want to describe it. And that apparently needs to happen sooner rather than later according to the WBA. So I'm not sure if Daniel Dubois would want to jeopardize a shot at, let's say, Usyk or Fury in the not too distant future by taking on Dylan White. I don't know. Um, and then we move on to Daniel Dubois, who again, just like I say, might want to jeopardize his position, similar to Dylan White, who wants a big fight. That just leaves us with Michael Hunter. Hunter, to my knowledge, correct me if I'm wrong, is a free agent. He tried to fight Huey Fury, but Fury pulled out twice. Fury is like the most sickly heavyweight I think I've ever seen. He's always ill with something, always pulling out with something. It's been like this most of his career. So that is what that is. Michael Hunter tried to fight him. He's been very inactive, Michael Hunter. Had that controversial draw with uh, Jerry Forrest. And most people at this stage would be picking Jared Anderson over Michael Hunter very firmly. So they'd be seeing Jared Anderson as a firm favorite because when you compare both of their performances against Forrest to each other, it's night and day. Anderson did much better against Jerry Forrest than Michael Hunter did, who really struggled and was very lucky to get a decision. With that being said, Michael Hunter did beat Jerry Forrest much earlier on in his career quite comfortably. But Forrest evidently has improved. Has Michael Hunter deteriorated? You know, I've been asking questions about Hunter in relation to him splitting up with Hasim Rackman because. All of his best performances to date were with Hassim Bratman. Since splitting with him, apparently splitting with him, he hasn't looked the same to me. Maybe he can't keep the discipline. Maybe he can't come up with the kind of game plans that Ratman had him come up with. I don't know what it is. 
Maybe it's just a coincidence. Maybe his deteriorating form hasn't got anything to do with Hasim Ratman, but it's just something worth considering. So anyway, I'd like to see Michael Hunter take on Jared Anderson. I think that Anderson would rightly be the favorite, but Michael Hunter, I think, is a dark horse in the division. But what I will say is, I think Hunter is going to be more effective against the bigger, slower guys. Against someone like Jared Anderson, who's not only, let's say, a medium-sized heavyweight, I think he's, him and Hunter are, are very similar dimensions. Hunter's a bit lighter than Jared Anderson, but he's only about an inch shorter. And I think reach-wise, they're about the same. But of course, Anderson's got the youth over Hunter. Fresher guy, you know? So I think against someone like that, I might not be so uh, confident that Hunter can pull off an upset. But against one of the bigger guys who isn't used to a mobile guy like Hunter, who maybe underestimates him, doesn't see him coming, that's where I think Hunter can spring an upset rather than against someone like a Jared Anderson. What I will say is, Hunter, even though he can be reckless himself early in fights, because he gets very aggressive, we saw that against Povetkin. I think that Hunter is a bit defensively, a, a, a bit more defensively responsible than uh, Jared Anderson. That's what I'll say. Hunter is a bit more aware, you know, a bit more seasoned and what have you, knows what to watch for early in fights with regards to shots that he could get clipped with, you know? Sometimes when he is overly aggressive, as we saw against Povetkin, he did get caught a few, but then he went in there against the likes of Sergei Kuzmin, turned him over, Martin Bacoli, we saw what happened there. So when Hunter wants to be careful, he can be careful. And he can be very clever and crafty. Whereas with Jared Anderson, I think there are, it's more than him just being aggressive and enthusiastic and all this kind of thing. I think there are technical issues with Jared Anderson with regards to his defense. I don't think it's just getting overexcited. I think there's a technical problem there that needs to be addressed. So anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments below about Jared Anderson calling out Philip Hergovich, Frank, San Frank Sanchez, Dylan White, Daniel Dubois, and Michael Hunter. Would you like to see any of those fights? Do you, like me, admire the fact he's calling out fellow contenders rather than trying to leapfrog all of them and get to a title shot, you know, jump the queue. And how realistic do you think any of those fights are? Let me know in the comments.